hey, if you're looking for ways to better manage your time, then you are in the right place because I'm gonna share with you my favorite tips for managing my time. If you're new around here, hello, my name is Jen Lehner. I'm a digital marketing and systems strategist and I have helped thousands of solo professionals quickly grow their business by outsourcing the smart way and using smart digital strategies to grow their businesses. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is to create a to-do list. So simple, I know, but there's a catch. It's a to-do list that you do in advance, not the morning that you hit your office. And there's so many different ways of doing to-do lists, but let's go through a couple of my favorite ways. A lot of people love to use Trello for their to-do list. There's so many ways you can do a to-do list in Trello, but I just made this super simple. I just made a column for every day of the week. I didn't have the weekend, but if we go into Wednesday, so I made a card for each Wednesday date, I guess, in the calendar. So like next week, whatever that is, I guess that'll be April 13th and so forth. Okay, so we go into April 6th and then you create a checklist and I've named my checklist to-do list and just start adding items do, 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 and so forth just like that the other thing that's really nice on trello is that it makes it so easy to collaborate with a team so let's say for this first task i can click here and add a team member and tag them i can also add a deadline right here i can change the due date and i can even put, add a time to it so it could be like 12 o'clock on Friday and you could get reminders. Yeah, I love it. And this also works in Asana if you prefer to use a project board like Asana. A great place to do to-do lists. The next thing that's really important to do is to remove all distractions as much as possible. So let's take a look at a couple of ways to do that. So I'm gonna go over to Facebook and I'm gonna show you something cool. Cause Facebook is, let's face it, it's one of our number one distractions when we are at our computers, right? And here we are. And there's my newsfeed, which is to say that there is no newsfeed. There is a really nice quote from Aretha Franklin. It's not the quotes that I sign up for newsfeed eradicator for, it's because I am not distracted by my newsfeed. Now, obviously I can go to Facebook on my phone, but if I have my notifications should start off on my phone and I am also like working at my computer, the chances that I'm going to get distracted by Facebook are a lot less. So how do you get Newsfeed Eradicator? Okay, so basically just go to Google and type in Newsfeed Eradicator and I'm gonna do this one that pops up first and this is it. It's a free Chrome browser extension and you know, I'm always wary as you should be as well because a lot of times free Chrome extensions can mess up your computer. But I've been using this for a very long time. I've had no trouble. And and you can see it's got 1,536 positive five stars and you're just gonna click add to Chrome. Of course, mine says remove from Chrome, but you're just gonna click add to Chrome and it will automatically kick in. Okay, in your phone, this is an iPhone. If you swipe down from the top right-hand corner of your screen down to the lower left-hand corner, this pops up and you'll see that the default setting here is focus, okay? So if I really and truly don't wanna be disturbed at all that I'll choose actually sleep and then my phone makes no sound at all it's actually it's interesting because the phone automatically knows when I'm at my office and it will default to work and basically if I click into those settings it shows that it will allow notifications from these apps and it will also allow notifications from these people so my husband is the only person that can reach me if I want to add my kids I can but my strongest setting in my phone is sleep. As you see, no people allowed, no apps allowed. So you could go in here and customize this for however you want it to be, but this is a wonderful way for limiting distractions. So obviously I am recording right now in my office, so I make sure and put a door hanger on here so none of the other people in my building knock on the door while I am recording. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that you are working or I should say working on high focus tasks during your most productive time of the day. And we're all really different. And I've learned this kind of the hard way. So I remember years ago when Miracle Morning came out, or you may be familiar with like the 5 a.m. club. And the basic premise with both of those 
books is that, I don't know if the 5 a.m. club is a book, I think it is, but anyway, the premise is you get up super early and you do, like you have your routines, and but you start super early, like 5 a.m. or even 4.30. And I did that for probably a good six or seven months. But what I learned is that it just didn't work for me because even though I was getting a lot accomplished, by the middle of the day, I felt horrible. And by the end of the day, I was really completely spent and had nothing left for my family. And that's because my biorhythms just aren't set up that way. I am not by nature a super early morning person. I am most creative in the morning, but just not that early. So for me, I adjusted my sleep schedule. So now I do make sure and get in at least eight hours sleep but I'm going to bed much earlier and I get up a little later. So I'm up at like 6.45 or seven. I get to the office by eight or nine and my most highly productive hours are between that time when I get to the office and about noon. And after that, the rest of my tasks, they need to be the kind of tasks that don't require any kind of like real focus or creativity on my part. So you need to really have an honest conversation with yourself and find out when are your most highly productive hours and then time block those accordingly. And we're gonna talk about time blocking and calendar blocking in a second. So as digital as I am, I have come to love just having a handwritten to-do list. And on top of that, what I like to do is make a to-do list for a week at a time. And this structure, this format of this sheet, I'm going to link down below so you, you can have access it, to it if you're interested. But basically, let me walk through it with you. So maybe it's better actually that we look at the one on my screen so it's not so shaky. So this is what your form is going to look like. And let me talk you through the way this is set up. So obviously, you know, we're going to put the week so we can keep track of that. And this is fillable. Just make sure you save it as a PDF or you'll lose all of your content. And so I am a big fan of theming my days. Okay. So a theme could be something like Monday is going to be all about content. Tuesday is going to be all about financials. Wednesday is going to be all about meetings. Thursday is going to be all about whatever, right? Like, so a lot of people do their calendars like that. I like to use what I learned from Dan Sullivan with Strategic Coach, and that is creating days that are either buffer days, focus days, or free days. And buffer days are days that where you're just like, you think of it as sort of like rehearsal. It's not the performance, it's the rehearsal. So it's all the things you have to do before you go on stage. It's also like organizing, delegating, cleaning up, learning, you know, brushing up on your skills, organizing, that sort of thing. And ideally, you want to have more focus days than buffer days because focus days are the money-making days. Those are the days when you're doing the things that you started your business to do. So that might be you're actually your coaching, you're actually delivering a service, or you are doing a live stream, or you're recording a YouTube video because those are things that only you can do and they're directly related to revenue. Then lastly, of course, free days are free days. That means that it's just all about you enjoying yourself, has nothing to do with the business. So for this week, we're going to say, and this is an actual week for me, Monday is definitely a buffer day. I was coming back from a conference on Monday and I needed to really sort of organize myself after that and my thoughts and all that. And actually, let's start over here on the right first and we'll start with our weekly projects. What projects are you working on or the week. So I'm going to put some things on here that may not make any sense to you, but they make sense to me. Okay. So I've got my weekly projects. These are the projects that are going to be working on this week. And then daily, we just want to break those down into tasks. And very importantly, we're going to put like who, who is going to be working on those tasks because who is the most important thing, because ideally much of this stuff you are going to delegate. And then of course, down here under priorities, what are the things that have to happen this week? Like no non-negotiable have to happen this week. So we're going to put that there. And then relationships. It seems kind of terrible that we need to remind ourselves to nurture our relationships, but this isn't just personal, it's professional as well. So this week I have on my list, my friend Azade, and I emailed her and asked her if she wanted to go for a walk. She said, absolutely. So we've got that scheduled for Thursday. And then I had someone come and do a training for me. So I wanted to remember to send her a proper thank you. And I've actually already accomplished that. And then I have two good friends that did something really special for me and I needed to send them a special thank you. And that was done. And I have one thing left and that is to send a snail mail 
to, I will just say blank here, and this is a, I guess you could call him an influencer who I admire, and I want to send him a snail mail telling him how much I appreciate his work. So this obviously falls more into the business realm, keeping those business contacts alive and not letting that network that you've built die because you work too hard to build it. So it's nice to have this checklist over here. So obviously you will tweak this to suit your business, but this is what works for me. Okay, the next thing is having regular morning routines. Really having regular routines, period. Morning, you know, middle of the day, end of the day, but definitely having a morning routine. What is your morning routine? It could be something as simple as, you know, you wake up, you get dressed, you have your coffee, you write your to-do list. You wake up, you get dressed, you do some yoga or before you get dressed, right? Like you wake up, you do yoga, you do 10 push-ups, and you get dressed, you have your coffee or you don't, you have your tea and you head out the door. Whatever it is, it's really important that we have routines because we're just gonna waste less time when we know exactly what it is we need to do and we prepare for it, then our day is gonna be so much more productive. This next one is so important that I literally made it my word for the year and that is batching. So batching your content, and let's face it, we all have to worry about content creation. Really, regardless of what industry you're in, what business you're in, you need to be producing content. And the key to being successful with content creation and to really make it work for you so that you're just not constantly worrying like, what am I gonna post today? What am I gonna post today? Is to batch your content. And I'm sure this isn't the first time that you've heard this, but there are different ways to go about it. So it might be that you create all of your content in the first week of the month. So let's say you publish a YouTube video once a week. Well, if you can do all four of those videos in the first week of the month, or even better, if you could do eight videos the first week of the month, then you are winning because you have your next eight weeks of content created, allowing you to focus on other revenue producing stuff in your business, right? Same thing for podcasts, blog posts, whatever. Now for me, I really struggle with it. And that is because I find that after I do one YouTube video, I'm actually pretty spent. And the same thing with a podcast episode, but I'm getting better at it. And I definitely find when I make a really deliberate attempt to batch and I do successfully batch, then my life is just so much better. So it's a continuous struggle for me, but one that I think is super worthwhile. And I highly recommend it if you're able to do that. So this next one, you've known about this since you were in elementary school, but how many of us actually do it? and that is to lay out everything you need for the following day the night before. And that all goes all the way down to your socks and what glasses that you're gonna wear, what bag you're gonna wear, what you don't wanna forget to take with you to the office, whatever it is, do it the night before. And your phone and all the things, your keys, are they all easily accessible? So when you're a busy entrepreneur, sometimes and we've got 10 balls in the air, so easy to let one of those things ruin your whole morning. Don't ask me how I know that. Well, I'll tell you how I know that. <laughs> it's because I lose my keys on a regular basis. So now I always make sure, I just grab these off a hook by my door. I always make sure that I have my keys on a hook somewhere when as much as possible, okay? But I still lose my keys. So you've probably seen these things. They are these air tags from Apple. I even have, can't remember what the, the tile. I've got a tile on here as well, but I really prefer the air tags from Apple. So it allows you to pair it with your phone. And if you lose your keys, you can press the app on your phone and it will make this thing make noise and you can follow it. It'll say your keys are 500 feet away or whatever and it'll help you find your keys. So this one also is, this is a fantastic little gadget. Highly recommend. And my next favorite tip is using the scheduled send feature in Gmail. And if you use Apple Mail or any of the others, I think they're available to you there as well. But let me show you how I use it to stay ahead of things. Okay, let's look at Google Tasks. This is another great way to create a to-do list. Download the Google Tasks app, and then it's just as easy as clicking the plus sign and typing in all your different tasks and task two, and just like that. And then, of course, you get the satisfaction of clicking on them when you have completed them. All right, let's go to Apple Notes now, and we'll open up a new note, and then you just click the little checklist thing, and away you go. 
And again, you get the satisfaction of being able to check them off your list. And then you can also share the note, which is nice. So I can add someone to the note that's on my team and they can make changes or I can put it in view only mode. Now I'm in Evernote and I can click here and start a task list as well. I mean, the truth is there's a million to-do apps out there. Todoist is another one. There's so many out there. You just, it's really all about picking the one that works for you. And then, you know what? Like I showed you with the weekly planner that I have, pen and paper is just fine. Okay, so my last tip for being more productive, and you knew I was gonna say this if you've been following me for any amount of time, and that is you gotta have help. You gotta have help, you gotta have help. And I just don't know how else to say it. If you are the only person doing, let me put it this way. If you don't have an assistant in your business, you are the assistant. You are not whatever it is you think you are. You're, you are an assistant because you're doing all of that admin stuff that you should not be doing. So having someone duplicating yourself is like the smartest thing that you can do. And it's what's going to give you the most traction. It's going to give you the most growth. So I'm not going to go into all the ways to go about that because I've got a million videos here on the YouTube channel. I make sure you click that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of them. That's the number one way to be productive. So I hope you enjoyed this. Would love to hear your thoughts as I always do. Make sure and comment below and let me know some of your favorite ways of managing your time and being more productive that I didn't cover. See you soon.